Hey everybody, today I'm going to make a video about general priorities on how to grow your kingdom effectively. This video and the ones that are going to be following it are more focused on keeps that are not at the max level. So that's currently 35. Anything really 33 or less I would consider to be a lower level keep and this video would be for you. Um, so I'm going to talk about priorities and what you should be focusing on um, because I have talked to a few players and they are all over the place uh, generally and when you try to focus on everything in this game because there's a lot you're not going to do everything well you're going to do uh, well you're just gonna slow yourself down so the primary important things that you should be focusing on to catch up to the upper level players are really what I want to focus on in this video and I have a few things on my list here. The first is I'm going to talk about growing your keep level, how to do that. I'm going to talk about resource intake. So that's both passively getting resources and actively going out and gathering. Um, and the last thing I'm going to discuss is how important it is to have an active alliance. Uh, that being said, let's get started with the first one, which is growing your keep level. Okay. Um, so keep level is obviously the biggest staple of, uh, biggest identifier of how you're doing in the game. So this player, for example, is level 30 keep, um, which is all right, but that's, you know, it, that, I, that was what, a year, year and a half ago that was, uh, 30 was a max level. So they're still quite a bit behind. Um, and when you start to get to this point, building keeps starts costing a lot. And that's why I'm really talking about resource gathering in this video as well, because that's one of the biggest challenges for players is getting enough resources. Um, so the first thing here is when you are growing your keep level, when you're trying to get to 35 and you're 30 or 32 now, you need to focus on what's important. If I click upgrade on this keep, I can see I need to build walls level 30. So that should be my priority. I should be focusing on getting the resources to build walls. I shouldn't be doing all kinds of other things like uh, building up my market and building up uh, my trap factory. You know, some things that are not important uh, for this player right now. Getting a higher level keep is going to change everything in the game for you. The higher you get, the more things unlock. And if you get to the max level keep, then you can really start to focus on the things that will improve your, your gameplay. And I know that it's uh, also, it kind of kills uh, the fun. Some of the things I'm gonna talk about in here are going to kill a little bit of your fun, but it's gonna make you a whole lot more effective in the end. So. You really need to consider what your gameplay style is. If it's just, I just want to go and build some stuff and hit people and I don't really care if I grow, this isn't for you. This is for the player that wants to get to the end. They want to get to level 35 keep and they want to compete with players, even if they don't spend a lot of money in the game. Um, then this is for you. All right, so that is the big thing. Stop focusing on other buildings that aren't important. There are always buildings in here that you're gonna to have to improve and improve them in the order that the keep tells you um, because that will help you focus your priorities. The next thing I have on my list here is using resources wisely and use boxes sparingly. And what I mean by that is uh, the person that I was talking to that really inspired this video was talking about building a ton of troops and they're level 30 keep. And I can tell you as a, a player that has uh, much higher level troops and better generals and everything, you can have 20 million tier 10 troops and I can clear it with one attack. Like it, there's no point in building these troops. All you're doing is hampering your own success. If you build a lot of troops at lower levels, what you are really doing is just making it so that you're eating more of your food, so your resources, um, this player is doing pretty good here, uh, but the resource consumption for food, where is it, uh, did I skip it somewhere? Food production upkeep. So this player only has 262,000 upkeep, which is excellent. 
and they're producing 2.5 almost five million food per hour. That's big and that means that instead of having all these troops that are eating your food you're going to be getting to 1.3 billion like this player in uh, every month basically just passively clicking um, so it's going to be a huge advantage and also a nice upside to that too is uh, you don't have to worry about losing troops because you don't have them and when I say this I mean I don't mean don't build any troops, I mean build smart troops. So um, I'll go over and show you this player's troops. So their troops right now, they have a few of this, you know, a few upper uh, siege, uh, some level one warriors, but really the focus is they have about one million catapults, tier one siege. The reason they have this is not to be successful in PvP, it's so that they can gather everything they need, uh, sending like all out to uh, level 14 tiles, and gather resources, and uh, because they're level one troops, they have almost no upkeep. So you have everything you need to get resources quickly, and you have absolutely no cost. So this player is gonna grow very, very quickly in terms of resources. They'll definitely, look, they already have enough for their next keep. So the only thing that could hold this player back is speed ups, and I'll talk about that later. Um, the last note I have on growing your keep level is spending at the right time. You should always, always, always plan to spend billions, and yes, I'm serious, billions of resources upgrading the important buildings every two months. And the reason I say that is because every two months or so, uh, it's not exactly two months, maybe a month and a half or or so, but every two months you'll have a consumption event. Oh, they changed the location. So you'll see that here, it says super value event. The one that's on right now is not consumption, which is why this person is saving their resources and not spending. So here's a big, big tip about growing your uh, keep level. If you are in the other consumption, the one that's all about spending resources, it goes up to uh, many billions of resources and if you can save up a lot you can put on all these big buildings like keeps and hospital and walls and just have them there and then do not speed them up just spend the resources so you can collect all the rewards and the rewards will give you hundreds of millions of other resources and uh, other things materials and so on and it's a good collection you'll also get speed ups uh, from the other one which is interesting because if you wait again several more weeks for that other consumption to end you'll get into this one and this one is about using those speed ups so you just have to play it really smart why did I click there again spend resources in the resource consumption and make sure you stockpile them to spend them all there and then when you've used them on big buildings with big timers, then you wait till you come here and then you spend speed ups here to get more resources. And the better you do at saving up and blowing it all on that one consumption day, the more rewards you'll get and it kind of snowballs. It gets bigger and bigger and eventually you'll have tons and tons of speed ups, you'll have tons and tons of resources and you'll be able to grow very, very quickly. All right, so that's a huge, thing to know about um, growing your kingdom. All right, next, and uh, the, this is a passive resource intake. What I'm really talking about in this uh, are just your actual tiles here, like the city tiles. So notice the player all has uh, level 30 buildings here to collect all the resources, and I'm just clicking them because I, I need something to do with my hands right now, apparently, but the reason they have level 30 buildings is because the speed ups required for getting to the next level are pretty insignificant. Like even from 30 to 31, it would only be 25 days compared to let's say the walls, which is 138. So it's pretty easy, especially in the lower levels to build these up. Um, and over time, you'll get a big return. You'll spend resources, but you'll over a long time, get more than what you paid back. So it is an investment. And those are buildings that are definitely worthwhile to spend 
especially in your consumption, before you cue the big one that you saved up for, um, for the, uh, the speed ups and all that. Um, okay, so uh, where was I here? So I'm talking about um, your priorities of passive resource intake. So in city production should definitely be a priority. And I'll show you uh, one thing I was telling you here or that I was trying to show you here is you can do speed ups, 24 hour speed ups or eight hour speed ups to increase your production. And if you don't know how to get the eight hour speed ups, um, you actually compose those. So I'll just show you that real quick. You go to speed ups and if you actually go to your 24 hour speed ups, for example, you can compose and three of them turns into an eight hour one. I don't always do that myself, but you can if you have tons and tons. Um, so make sure you are putting those on and uh, that you are also putting, I'll, I'll just say this ahead of time, that you're also putting on your gathering reserve speed all the time because those are you know, very plentiful in this game. You can always have that on and never run out if you are maintaining your kingdom. Um, so you should be able to get pretty good resource production. This player here has, for food, 2.5 million minus 300,000. So they have over 2 million food production, 1.5 million lumber, uh, almost a million stone, and 1 million ore. And um, it's not really the setup that I would go with. I uh, personally, because I'm in an alliance that does a lot of bosses, um, I end up with way too many food uh, boxes and so I would never need this kind of food and plus I have tens of millions of, uh, of troops in mind so I can't even really produce or I, I, I just end up with too much food and I don't know what to do with it so I'm always spending my food and all my food comes in boxes so I would never have this personally as a big one uh, as a big kingdom but as a lower level player trying to build up you might choose to do like 1 million or 1.5 million production of food and that should be plenty and I would probably personally bump up the uh, the rest of them maybe try to get them to one point something million each at least so that you have this constant production okay um, that's your in city production and I've already talked about the speed up boost that you can do one other thing that's important is in your talents um, make sure that you have resource production on um, the other options are, are mortality and builder dura duration. Uh, mortality is actually really good if you are taking a lot of losses, like you're rallying boss 14, boss 15, that sort of thing. This is very important. But if you're watching this video, that's probably not you. So resource production is great. Um, and you do lose 20% gathering by increasing your production. Um, but it's a pretty good trade-off overall unless your in-city tiles are really low and then I might say don't do that yet. Um, you will also, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this later. Okay, I'll talk about some of these things later. All right, so the next topic after in-city production is your active resource intake. Um, this one is the most important part of this video and for this I'm actually going to take you through some generals um, and what I'm talking about active production I think I actually let me go back gosh why did I skip something I skipped a boss chest and that's just something really quick I want to talk about if you're in an alliance that does a lot of stuff you will get boss chests um, this player is not so they don't have a lot but you'll get boss chests and uh, they'll get they'll have resources in there and it does add up all right that's what I also consider to be passive because you're not doing it for those resources but you do get a, bo a, a lot all right sorry for that now let me go back to active resource intake and I'm talking about gathering um, like I said this is super important this is probably the most Im influential way that you will get resources and to do this successfully first easy uh, make sure you have the right talents you want to have troop load because that the higher troop load the less troops you need so then you don't have to maintain a big army um, you definitely want to have gathering boost gathering boost allows you to get extra resources so let's say you uh, send to a 7 million uh, resource tile which is level 14 
you'll get an extra 20% resources extra when you finish that. Um, so it's very beneficial over time. And if you are, what did I, did I miss anything? Uh, no, just those two are pretty important. Um, and you should also get resources critical if you are not like a, a really strong player, um, just because you'll get double chance of opening when you open boxes, like over here, for example, let's open some boxes. So uh, 100, so that should normally be 1.8 million. And what that does is you get a couple extra. So I got an extra one hit there, and sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, um, but it's very useful. All right, that was the easy part. And the other easy thing is make sure that this is active, a 24 hour or an eight hour, whatever, they, they're the same speed, just make sure it's active when you're resource gathering. But here's the tricky part. To successfully make sure that your gathering is very, very good, you want preferably Queen Jindiok as uh, a general. And when I say you want Queen Jindiok, I actually mean you want five of them. So this player has one, two, three, four, five, perfect. Five generals, they're not maxed. You know, there's one over here that I think was 18, 18, yeah. Um, but I do like what they did here with uh, the cultivating. If you look at Queen Jindiok's cultivation, you'll notice that they didn't really care about these stats here, but when they cultivated, um, they focused entirely on politics. So it didn't matter if the rest went up or down. If politics went down, then um, you wouldn't upgrade it. And you'd try to get to 300 with gold, and then after that, use gems to get your politics up by going like this. And you click, 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 click until you get to 500, and it'll blow away your gems, but you'll have really high politics, which, if you look down here, increases your resource gathering speed by a percentage. So it's really great. Um, the other option, a cheaper option for Queen Jindiok is uh, if you have Princess Lucy from the Wheel of Fortune, you can get her sometimes. Where's the rewards? Uh, here. So sometimes if you're lucky, or these days, if you get some vendor loot, let's see. So Princess Lucy's here, you don't get her very often. I've, since I played this game, I've got her like five times, which seems like a lot, but it's really not, um, considering how many times you put through. But still, I wouldn't get her, if you have her, use her if you don't have Queen Jindiok, but try to get Queen Jindiok in the tavern. She's just so important. Get five of her, um, and you will be doing great. And uh, you watch my skill books video to learn a great way to uh, add skill books. Make sure that you put the proper books on and you're not wasting your skill books. Um, so it doesn't matter which ones, go with what you have. And uh, also, you definitely want, for each Queen Jindiok, you want to have a set of King's Gear and Hero Armor. So if you look at these, I'll click on them. Here's one example. You have the King's Axe, and they naturally have gathering speed on them. So I think it's the only type of piece that has, well, it's, the, it's not the only one, but it's the best uh, gear that has gathering speed. This is not stuff you're going to use for PvP because it's lower level, but it is great to put on her because she will be getting more resources faster. Um, so what you can also do when you have that is you can refine them. So you have the base 50%, and then when you refine the axe, hopefully this person won't be too mad that I'm spending, no, I won't spend their stuff. It's only 50 per shot, um, and you want to try to get something that's at least 12 and above. Uh, let's lock these and see if we can score this person something better than 7.5. I don't know if we will. Let's try 8.7. Well, that is better. Keep that. Try another one. I'm not going to try too much. Cancel that. Oh, whoops. I probably shouldn't have used all the gems. All right. Um, but that's the idea. You want to have refines on all of your pieces that increase your um, gathering speed. 
you're not going to get it on all the pieces. It's only specific pieces that get you those. So you're looking at helm, refining your helm to get gathering speed, refining your legs to get gathering speed, and refining your weapon to get gathering speed. The rest doesn't matter. There's no refinement on any of these that is important except if you get troop load, but you should save your stones for more important things. So you do refines on these three pieces. This person's looking like they're pretty good, actually, overall. Look at some of these. Yeah, that's pretty good. A couple needed, but um, yeah, pretty good overall. So those are really, really important. And uh, what that does is it just like when you cultivated your politics to that max amount, um, suddenly you can gather at a tile so quickly. And a level 14 tile, for example, for my Queen Jindiox takes less than four hours. It's really, really fast. Um, and for someone that doesn't have this, it might take you like eight. So we might have cut it down in half. And if you can keep doing that, remember you're sending Queen Jindiox, who naturally has extra resources because of her ability here. So she takes an extra 40% resources back. Um, and you also have an extra 20% from your talent and your cultivated max and you have all this speed up and all that. So every four hours or so you are not just taking back 7 million, you are taking back maybe 8 million or 9 million. Let's take a look at their reports. What kind of defending failed? Okay, that's not important. Resource gathering. Let's see what a level 14. I need 14. You don't get 14s or what? 14. 9.7. Oh, that's really good. Higher than I thought. 9.7. So you send at 7 million and you take back an extra 2.7 million extra resources. Just about 2.8. So that's awesome. Um, so you just, what? You can send out five of these and every four hours so that is wow you can take in over hundred and something million resources per day 150 million or so per day that's pretty good of overall resources right so think about that you can gather those resources really really quickly if you do it the right way all right and the last priority that I want to talk about is an active alliance. So I, I want to mention this because the person I'm talking about right here is in an alliance and it is an active alliance but it's not one that does bosses. Like right now you can see there's nothing going on. That's not good and that's probably the main reason why this person is level 30. They have plenty of resources but they don't have the speed ups to make any of that happen. I can probably check that right now. Yeah, look, there, that's not a lot of speed ups. There's a lot of speed ups in some other areas, but not a whole lot for construction, and I'm guessing not a whole lot for, no, yeah, there's not a lot for normal either. So make sure you are in an active alliance that is constantly running bosses if possible, because not only do you get speeds, you get materials, you get resources passively, like I talked about before. Um, you communicate with other members, you can help each other out, uh, maintain your bubbles better because you're watching each other. Um, also, there's the event rewards. So you can do Vikings, you can do uh, Undead, you can do other things like that and you get rewards from those. And the last topic I have here is a growth pack. And um, I've seen it a few times, I've never done it, but basically the idea is you get together four or five people and you focus on one person at a time. And that way you can boost somebody up really well and everybody sends resources to that person. And let's say, for example, it's your, your week and uh, it's consumption right now. So everybody's gonna send you resources from our group. You're going to get to five billion consumption. You're gonna get a ton of rewards and you're gonna be set up for the next one. Well, the next consumption round, it might be my turn and you're gonna do the same for me. So it's, it is beneficial and it does work, um, but really I personally would, if I had to redo everything again, I would do it this way. I would focus on nothing but 
resource gathering, building up resources, and making sure that I am in every boss rally possible for speed ups and just spend it smart. And that way you can grow so quickly and you can catch up to level 35 and then the game can actually start. All right. Hopefully, I know this is a long video. It's what, 25 minutes? Holy crap. That's a long video. Um, but it was a very important one and I did want to talk about all this stuff so that I can help so many of you that are focusing on the wrong priorities. Uh, let me stop it there. Um, and uh, please, if you do have any questions, put them in the comments. I do read through the comments, so um, I try to reply when I can. And I will get to other videos pretty soon. Thank you for watching.